Greetings sirs and madams, I'm Seraphic Zero, and this is the first installment of the In-Depth Lance Guide. This presentation is for intermediate and advanced hunters, so I assume that you are at least familiar with basic monster hunter mechanics. If you are newer to the Lance, I recommend you look at weapon guides from other creators such as Eryx or Gaijin Hunter. We will be discussing mechanics in detail, and the contents of this guide will need to be broken out into several videos. Hold on to your asses. Hunters who main the lance adore it for its adaptability. It has a tool for every situation. Its quick and accurate counterattacks can be likened to a martial art like boxing or Wing Chun. Its shield can tank situations that would have any other hunter fleeing in terror, and its precise evasion and ability to close distance make it the absolute fastest and most mobile weapon in the entire series. Welcome to the In-Depth Lance Guide Part 1, Mechanics. The lance is a deceptively simple weapon. Its moves are direct and to the point. However, what makes lance gameplay deep is that the toolbox is huge, and at any moment you have access to 100% of it. Let's begin looking at those tools. Unsheathing, sheathing, draw, and walk speed. Unsheathe the lance with triangle. Sheathe with square or R1. Notice that the lance has a very long sheathing animation. Because of this, you will want to avoid sheathing your weapon unless absolutely necessary. You can draw into an attack with triangle and a directional input. Use the R2 button to draw directly into a guard stance. With the weapon drawn, the lance has a very low walk speed. However, this will not be a problem since you will not be doing very much walking. You will be shown later many alternatives for controlling distance. Attacks Before we discuss attacks, we will need to define a concept known as motion value. If the attack stat is the damage potential of your weapon, then the motion value is how hard you swing your weapon. Each of the individual attacks in your moveset will have a different motion value. Keep in mind that motion value only affects raw damage, and not elemental or status damage. One of the first things you'll notice about the lance is that it has very long reach. Its hitbox pretty much covers the entire length of the weapon. You can even use it to detonate bombs at a safe distance. The lance can combo in sets of three. The most basic attack is the mid thrust, performed with triangle. The motion value is 20. Notice that it hits even with the ground, and that each thrust carries you a little bit forward. On the third hit, the motion value is 27. Press circle to do the high thrust. The motion value is 22 on thrust 1 and 2, and 27 on hit 3. Notice that it does slightly more damage than the mid thrust, and has less forward motion. The long reach makes it a good anti-air option, but it can often be very difficult to hit monsters that have fallen down. Press triangle and circle together to do the wide sweep. The motion value is 20 on every hit. While most lance attacks are very precise, this one allows you to do crowd control or even hit monsters that are standing behind you. You cannot do two sweeps consecutively. You can chain these three basic attacks together in any order and combination, with the exception of consecutive sweeps. Notice that the lance combo hits fairly quickly. This means that the lance is good at dealing elemental damage or applying status effects. The reason for this is because element and status are not affected by motion value. Instead, they deal a fixed amount with every hit. So, because the amount per hit is fixed, the only way to apply more is to do more hits in the same amount of time. Step and Evasion one of the most challenging things to learn about the lance is its style of evasion. Instead of a roll, it has a step. Press X to perform a step. The default direction is a back step. With directional input, you can change the direction of the step. The forward step doesn't cover very much distance. You can chain up to three steps together. Each step requires that you have enough stamina left in your gauge. Steps can be used to cancel your combos and to reposition your hunter. 
The beginning of the step has invincibility frames, which can allow you to dodge through attacks with good timing. The invulnerability window can be increased with the evade window armor skill, or with the evasion mantle. The lancing style, known as evade lancing, will be discussed further in a different video. Following an attack or another step, you can hold back and press X to perform a long back step. This step covers more distance and cannot be followed by an additional step. You can follow up with an attack or a guard dash, which we will cover later. Keep in mind that the lance is unable to roll on the ground with the weapon unsheathed. This means it will have a difficult time putting out negative blights such as fire and blast blight. However, the lance is able to put out these blights by performing steps. It usually requires 4 or 5 steps altogether to extinguish the blight condition. This can consume a large amount of stamina, so it is a risky situation. At this point you might be asking, why does the lance use a step and not a dodge roll like all the other weapons? The reason for this is because a step allows the lance to dodge or reset its combo and still face the monster at the end of its evasive maneuver. With any other weapon, you have to roll and turn around to face the monster again to continue attacking. This is an inefficient use of time. However, with the lance, it can resume attacking almost right away. Guard Guard with R2. This will raise your shield and block attacks coming from in front of you. Blocking consumes stamina, and your guard will fail if you do not have enough stamina to block the attack. Heavier attacks will consume more stamina to block and will cause a knockback state. While you are in the knockback state, you are basically forced to hold your guard stance until the state is over. While guarding, you will also take chip damage from the attack. Chip damage is proportional to the damage of the attack being blocked, and it is reduced depending on your hunter's total defense and by the armor skill guard. The description for the guard armor skill does not mention that it reduces chip damage for some reason. Hunters die from chip damage all the time, so pay very careful attention to your HP. When your HP is low enough, you should avoid taking additional chip damage without healing. In the guard stance, you use the left stick to do a shield walk. This allows you to slowly adjust your direction or position with your guard raised. Notice that doing this will allow you to slowly recover stamina. A standard guard can block multiple attacks in a row, as long as you have enough stamina. With the shield raised, press triangle to perform a guard poke. The motion value is 20. This allows you to do a quick attack and resume your defensive stance. However, you can be hit during the guard poke, and it does not combo into any other attacks. Also notice that you recover stamina while performing the guard poke, or any other standard attack. The guard poke can be used to precisely detonate bombs at a safe distance. With the shield raised, you can also press triangle and circle together to perform a lance charge. This is an important tool which we will discuss in detail later in the guide. Lastly, you can also go from a guard stance to performing a step by pressing X with your shield raised. This can allow you to stay guarded while waiting for the right timing to evade. Aside from monster attacks, you can use your shield to block roars, wind pressure, and ground tremors as well. This reduces the need for lance players to use armor skills like earplugs or wind pressure negate. There are some attacks in the game which are normally unblockable. Examples include the pin attacks from Rathlos and Devil Joe, and the beam attacks from Xenojiva. Normally, these attacks can simply be avoided with good positioning or evasion, but they can be blocked if you use the armor skill Guard Up. Guard up does not give any other effects like additional knockback protection or reduction of chip damage, which is a common misconception. Guard dash. Formerly known as a guard advance, press forward and triangle during a guard to perform a guard dash. A guard dash consumes a fixed amount of stamina and has a higher knockback protection than a standard guard. When the attack impacts your shield, a fixed amount of stamina will be consumed. 
However, if the hit is too heavy, you will be hit into the knockback state, and the block will consume even more stamina. The extra cost in stamina can be very risky, so be careful not to use a guard dash if you know the block will fail. A guard dash can block multiple hits in a row, and you are protected for the entire duration of the maneuver. This makes guard dashing a very safe defensive maneuver compared to steps performed with the X button where the invulnerability window is very short. Following an attack or step, you can enter different directional inputs for guard dashes in the left, right, or back directions. This can allow you to reposition while in a guarded state and allows you to do some very interesting things. Additionally, you can hold L2 and perform the side and back guard dashes without preceding input. During a guard dash, you have two different attacks available to you. Press triangle to do a shield bash. It has 14 motion value and does exhaust and KO damage. This can be useful, but this attack is generally slow and difficult to access, so not many people use it. After a shield bash, you can combo into any other basic attack. If you press circle during a guard dash, you will perform a leaping thrust. This attack will lunge you forward some distance and deal 3 hits of 8 motion value each. Leaping Thrust has a special Mind's Eye property where it will not bounce regardless of sharpness or target hardness. Leaping Thrust is a very good tool for closing distance. Counter The counter is one of the main staples of Lance gameplay. It is performed by pressing circle while guarding with R2. It allows the Lance to transition between defense and offense almost instantly. Simply pressing and releasing R2 and circle will perform the short counter. The timing for this is always the same. The counter attack is a high thrust. If you add a directional input, the counter attack will be a mid thrust instead. Keep in mind that counters only block a single attack, so it should not be used against attacks with multiple hits. If you successfully trigger a counter, the hunter will have super armor during counter attack animations, meaning you will take damage, but you will not be knocked back. Holding R2 after inputting the counter command will do a long counter. The shield will be raised for a set amount of time. We will refer to this as the counter state. This allows you to extend your defensive timing if you are unsure when exactly the attack will land. If your shield is hit during this state, it will automatically trigger a counter. The counter state ends after a set amount of time if nothing triggers a counter attack. A long counter ends with a charged counter hit with 40 motion value. This is one of the strongest attacks that Lance can do, and it can be easily accessed at any time. The charged counter hit also has Mind's Eye, meaning it will not bounce. If the knockback on the attack is too heavy, your counter will fail, and you will enter the knockback state. If this happens, you will not perform a counter attack. If this happens frequently during the hunt, consider using the armor skill guard in order to be able to counter heavy attacks successfully. Lance counter allows you to access an extremely important defensive mechanic called the counter cancel. This will be discussed later in the guide. Power guard. During the counter state, press R2 and X in order to activate power guard. Power guard is a new addition to Monster Hunter World and it is probably one of the Lance's best tools. The Power Guard has a lot of interesting properties. The first thing you'll notice is that Power Guard consumes your stamina quickly at a constant rate. The stamina consumption will end if you release R2, perform an attack, or if you're hit. The high stamina consumption of Power Guard requires that you have good timing as a trade-off to having stronger knockback resistance. If you run out of stamina, you will automatically exit Power Guard with a somewhat long reset animation. While it is not ideal, if you have accidentally entered the long counter state too early, you can enter Power Guard to further extend your defensive window or to try to exit your counter more quickly. 
There is an alternate way to enter the power guard state. During the knockback state, you can enter R2 and X to enter power guard. This allows you to recover from knockback more quickly at the cost of stamina. Power guard's defensive properties are very different compared to your other guard options. The knockback resistance on power guard is higher than both your standard guard and your guard advance. However, there are attacks in the game which can knock back a power guard hard enough to cause a counter attack to fail. So don't think that power guard makes you invincible. Additionally, power guard actually causes you to take increased chip damage. Let me say that again. Power guard takes increased chip damage. Essentially, the only reason you should use power guard is if you want to trade HP in order to have an opportunity to counterattack a monster's heavy hitting move. Because of this property, there are instances where you should avoid using power guard when taking chip damage in mind. For instance, if you are in a situation where a counterattack is impossible, taking increased chip damage with power guard is pointless. A prominent example that comes to mind is Nair Gigante's dive bomb attack where he removes his black spikes. This attack moves the monster so far out of your reach that a counterattack becomes impossible, so all a power guard accomplishes is causing you to lose more HP. Against this attack, a regular guard will suffice. Anyone who tells you to use power guard against Nair Gigante's dive bomb has no idea what they are talking about, and you should be wary of taking their advice in the future. Another property of Power Guard is that it blocks attacks in any direction, meaning you can block attacks from the front, side, or rear. This can be extremely useful if you're in a position where you cannot turn to block an attack, or you don't know from which direction the attack will come. For example, a lot of monsters change their posture greatly during their roar animation, often causing the roar to catch you from behind or from the side. Power Guard can allow you to guarantee a successful block and make an opening to counterattack. When you are hit during power guard, the stamina consumption will stop temporarily. If you continue to hold R2, you will continue to power guard and the stamina consumption will resume. Notice that blocking the actual attack does not consume additional stamina. This means that if you have good timing with power guard, you can use very little stamina. Technically, it can also allow you to block an attack when you are nearly out of stamina, but the timing on this is so tight, it really should not be something you do regularly. Power Guard can also block multiple hits from any direction. It can be very risky, but useful against monsters like Basil Geese, which can drop bombs all around you. This also makes it a safer alternative than the Lance Counter, which is not effective against multi-hit attacks. Notice that being hit during the power guard state does not automatically trigger a counter attack. The power guard's attacks have to be activated manually. From power guard, press triangle to do the leaping thrust. Otherwise, press circle to perform the charged counter hit. This is always the charged version with 40 motion value and mind's eye. Power guard to charge counter is a way to quickly have access to that strong attack or in case you need to deal some damage in a situation where you know you could bounce. A very interesting property of the Power Guard's counterattacks is that if you have directional input from the left stick, you can counterattack in any direction. This is one of the most useful tools in the Lance's toolbox. This allows you to either adjust the direction you are facing mid-combo, or it allows you to redirect your counterattack after blocking a hit from a monster. Many monsters' attacks cause the monster to change position relative to the hunter. This can cause a standard counter to miss since it can only attack in the forward direction. However, a power guard counter attack can be redirected toward a monster with careful aim, allowing you to deal damage in a situation where you would normally miss. This is extremely valuable and efficient for Lance gameplay. A summation of Power Guard is that it allows you to trade chip damage and increased stamina consumption for a defensive state that blocks multiple hits in any direction with increased knockback protection, and it grants you control of the direction of your counterattack. It has incredible defensive and offensive efficiency, 
and it rewards good timing and judgment. Lastly, during the power guard state, you can press triangle and circle together to enter a lance charge. Notice that during the ready animation for the lance charge, you will recover some stamina. Lance charge. As mentioned earlier, lance charge can be activated by pressing triangle and circle together, either while your shield is raised with R2 or during the power guard state. The lance charge is an effective tool for closing distance, and it also gives the lance a variety of attack options. It consumes stamina at a constant rate, although the stamina consumption is much lower in Monster Hunter World compared to previous titles. When a lance charge is activated, the hunter will charge forward lance first. Anything in the way of the lance will be damaged, the attack having 11 motion value for every tick. In a way, this allows for the lance to deal a good amount of damage over time, but it also eats through weapon sharpness very quickly. Also keep in mind that the lance is very vulnerable to bouncing during lance charge. You can bounce if your sharpness is too low or if you hit an environmental obstacle. Unfortunately, the lance charge will always bounce if your sharpness is yellow or lower, meaning you won't be able to use this move at all during the first few hours of the game until you can get a weapon with green sharpness. During the lance charge, you can hold left or right to steer the direction of the charge. You can also input left or right with X in order to do a sidestep to adjust your position as you charge. If you need to turn around completely and continue your charge, input back and X. You can stop the charge altogether by pressing X with no directional input, or you can press R2 to stop and raise your shield. I have had people ask if the lance charge is a guarded state, since it looks like the hunter has the shield raised during the animation, but unfortunately, it is not a guarded state. When lance charging, you can perform the finishing thrust with triangle or circle. The motion value is 50, the highest available of all lance attacks. This move has mind's eye, meaning it will not bounce. However, keep in mind that the lance charge itself does not have mind's eye, and you have a high chance of bouncing before being able to activate the finishing thrust. If you maintain your lance charge for a period of time, you will see a red flash indicating that the lance charge has hit a higher speed. There are three speeds for lance charge in total. As you increase in speed, you do higher tick damage and you gain access to the finishing twin thrust, which hits twice for 25 and 50 motion value. If the lance charge has pushed you past your target, you can perform a reverse attack by pressing back and triangle. This is a sweeping attack that also has 50 motion value. This attack is surprisingly precise and easy to control since it attacks in the opposite direction as a lance charge. I will discuss this later on in the video guide. Lance is one of the few weapons in the game that can do airborne attacks without the need for ledges. You can easily access the lance's airborne moves by pressing forward and X during lance charge. The jump will consume a fixed amount of stamina, but the lance charge's stamina consumption will end temporarily while the hunter is airborne. All of the lance's airborne attacks have mind's eye and will not bounce. While airborne, the mid-air dash attack has 20 motion value per tick. Press triangle or circle to do the advancing jump thrust for 50 motion value. This can allow you to potentially mount a monster. The lance's mount finisher is called finishing thrust. It looks like it hurts a lot. Additionally, the lance charge can allow you to climb low ledges without trouble. If you lance charge into a climbable wall, you can do a wall run. While the lance charge has some motions that are difficult to cancel out of, it is an extremely useful tool for closing distance and doing damage. It is also extremely effective for chasing or damaging fleeing monsters. Keep in mind that it is possible to enter a lance charge from your regular combo, and you can follow up with regular attacks after a lance charge finisher. Lance charge is great for closing distance with monsters, but while working in a team, keep in mind that the lance charge can trip your fellow hunters. You should either avoid using lance charge online, or maybe you can perform a jump to leap over them. 
Slope and Ledge Interactions The lance has several environmental interactions and airborne moves. Keep in mind that all airborne attacks naturally have mind's eye and it will not bounce. While sliding down a slope with your weapon sheathed, pressing triangle will have the hunter jump into the air and unsheath the lance into the lance charge. If you perform a lance charge down a slope, you will gain momentum much more quickly than normal. This can allow you to access more damaging moves more quickly, but it will be difficult to control your position. If you run and leap off a ledge, you can unsheathe your weapon and attack with triangle. If you press R2 while airborne, you will immediately enter the lance charge upon landing on the ground. This can be a good way of avoiding the recovery period while landing from great heights. With your weapon unsheathed, you can interact with ledges using steps, guard dashes, and the lance charge. Be mindful of guarding near ledges while in combat, since it is easy for a monster to push you across a ledge, and your guard will instead change into a lance charge without you knowing. Blending tools together. Some say the lance is a defensive weapon for turtling. Others argue that it is an extremely aggressive weapon capable of very high damage output. However, in my eyes, there is only one rule to wielding a lance. Efficiency. Lance is a weapon that can seamlessly transition between attack and defense and back again. You can minimize the time and resources spent responding to a monster, and the attacks you dish out can be focused directly on weak points for the entire hunt. Now that we know the moveset, let's look at how to blend these tools together. Combo Timing and Recovery Time Standard lance combos occur in strings of three. However, you are not required to commit to all three attacks. You can always end the combo earlier if you need to respond to any danger. You are also not required to mash the attack button as quickly as possible. The lance combo allows for delayed input. This gives you the ability to have more precise timing while you are anticipating the target monster's movements. While you are engaged in performing a combo, notice that your hunter is locked into facing the same direction. If you need to adjust your aim, you will need to find a way to exit the combo. Also notice that you cannot raise your shield during a combo by pressing R2. After an attack, you cannot perform a standard guard until the attack's recovery animation has ended. When you end a combo, there is a recovery period before you can attack again or block. You can interrupt a combo or shorten the recovery period by using something known as a cancel. Step Cancel There are several different kinds of cancels available to the lance. The most basic one is a step cancel performed with X. At any time during the combo, you can cancel into a step. This can be helpful especially if you need to adjust your direction or positioning. Remember that you can use a long back step or combo up to three steps together. Of all the cancels, the step cancel is the easiest to perform. Its only drawbacks are that steps consume stamina, and that the invincibility frames on the step can be very short if you are not using evade window skills. Keep in mind that most lance combos will slowly move you forward. Often, you will need to use a back step in order to reset your positioning. Bear in mind that you cannot guard or perform a counter immediately following a step. You will have to wait for the step's recovery animation to complete before you can use either of those two moves. Guard Dash Cancel The next cancel we will discuss is the Guard Dash Cancel. It can be used at any time in the combo, and you can even string steps and guard dashes together. Guard Dash Cancels are very useful in that they can block multiple hits, and they protect you for the entire duration of the animation. This makes them the safest kind of cancel you can perform. A guard dash cancel is also a very good tool to use if you accidentally perform a counter against an attack that has multiple hits to it. Since the counter only stops the first attack, if you can enter a guard dash quickly enough, it should cover you for the remaining hits. The only real limitation to a guard dash cancel is that if the knockback is too high, you will consume a large amount of stamina and be pushed into the knockback state. Also, your attack options change while using a guard dash cancel. You will have to use the shield bash or the leaping thrust. I recommend using the shield bash if your positioning is already good, 
or use leaping thrust to close distance. Keep in mind that you cannot perform two guard dashes in a row. If you attempt to do this, you will do a shield bash instead. Recall from earlier that the shield poke cannot combo into other attacks, but it can be cancelled with a step cancel or a guard dash cancel. Counter cancel. A counter cancel is one of the lance's most useful tools. It allows you to quickly enter the counter state at any time during the combo. If you do not hold R2, you'll do a short counter, or you can hold R2 to keep your shield raised. The counter cancel allows you to attack very efficiently. It doesn't consume any stamina and it maintains your positioning. Keep in mind that the counter is only effective against one hit. Otherwise, the only limitation on the counter cancel is that you cannot perform two in a row. However, it seems that you can counter again immediately after successfully countering an attack. There is a variation on the counter cancel that I call the power guard cancel. During the counter state of your cancel, immediately press R2 and X to enter power guard. The timing is somewhat slower than a counter cancel, but it opens up a lot of different options for you. For instance, you can block multiple hits, block hits from any direction, change the direction you are facing, or access more damaging attacks. This is my favorite kind of cancel to use if I see a monster is about to roar or use an attack with a very long wind-up animation. Controlling where you face. As discussed earlier, all of the Lance's main attacks are directed straight forward. This requires that you have proper positioning and that you're facing the correct direction. To correct your direction, you have several options. The first option, while inefficient, is simply to end your combo and turn to face the correct direction. Secondly, you can use a step cancel to exit your combo quickly. Use the left stick to adjust your direction before continuing your attack. A power guard cancel takes longer to set up, but it allows you to change your direction very easily. It also gives you access to a high damage counter attack. And while the recovery time on it can be long, your final option is to combo into the lance charge and use the reverse sweep attack. This will hit with high damage and will always turn you around 180 degrees. Controlling distance. Controlling the distance between you and the target monster is one of the most important aspects of combat in Monster Hunter, as it determines your defensive options and can allow you to bait certain attacks. Luckily for you, this is one area where Lance is king. When it comes to closing distance, you have several options that vary in effectiveness. While you can always sheathe your weapon to walk or run to your desired target, the long sheath animation of the lance generally makes this unsafe. You will want to use your other options when possible. While this appears clumsy and inefficient, I often find myself simply repositioning by walking with my weapon unsheathed. This option does not consume stamina, and it allows you to walk around all the obstacles of a monster's body shape. It is slow, but it allows you to access your best defensive options in a pinch. Of all the standard lance attacks, the mid-thrust will cause the hunter to step forward the most distance. Consider comboing these together to gradually move yourself forward. Remember that you actually recover stamina while attacking. This way, you can close distance and do damage at the same time. The forward step is new to Monster Hunter World. The step distance on it is very short, and it consumes a good amount of stamina. You can chain up to three together but the short distance covered and the stamina cost will usually make this a poor choice. I usually only use this if I am trying to put out a fire or blast blight. The forward step does have very precise timing and movement, however, so it can be a good choice when paired with the evasion mantle. The forward guard dash or guard advance is a good option for closing distance. If it doesn't meet knockback that is too high, it always uses a fixed amount of stamina on block. It is also protected in the forward direction for the entire duration of the animation. This is also useful since most things can be cancelled into a guard dash. One of my favorite discoveries is the guard advance to leaping thrust loop. This infinite combo covers a large amount of distance and has mind's eye. During the attack segments, you will also recover stamina, and you will be allowed to slightly adjust your aim with each attack. 
This combo is usually fast enough to catch up to several monsters during their limping or retreating sequence, such as the Kirin. Lastly, probably the Lance's strongest option for closing distance is the Lance Charge. You can close distance very quickly, and the stamina cost is very low. You can further mitigate stamina consumption with the armor skill Marathon Runner if you wish. Additionally, the damage ticks during the Lance Charge can add up quite quickly. The finishing attacks on the Lance Charge also do very high damage. The Lance Charge can seem unsafe, but you can easily cancel it with X or stop and guard with R2. Its only real weakness is that it can be vulnerable to bouncing. If you want to avoid bouncing, consider jumping with forward and X just before you reach the monster, as all of your airborne attacks have Mind's Eye. Lance Charge can be an extremely effective tool against monsters with rolling or charge attacks that create a lot of distance between them and the hunter. Against the likes of Diablos and Aragon, the Lance can close distance very efficiently. Retreating When it comes to retreating or creating distance, you have several defensive options. Backsteps are an obvious choice. You can chain up to three together, although they use up a good amount of stamina, and have limited invincibility frames. The long backstep performed with a back and X will cover more distance, but it will always end a step sequence. For this reason, consider using the long backstep as the last step in a chain of three. The long backstep is quite effective when combined with the evasion mantle. A reverse guard dash is probably something we should all use more often. It often covers more distance than a regular step, and it is safe for the entire duration of the move. It also just looks really cool. Since you are able to do a guard dash cancel out of almost anything, this is a good and adaptable option. You cannot chain multiple reverse guard dashes together, but you can follow it up with a standard backstep if you wish. If you hold L2, you can chain long backsteps and reverse guard dashes together. This defensive combo will consume a lot of stamina, but it can be very effective in a pinch. You should use it if you absolutely cannot afford to be near an attack. Lastly, you can use Lance Charge to put distance between you and the monster. The startup animation can be slow, but the distance it travels for low stamina cost can be very helpful. If you happen to be caught in the middle of a combo and need to retreat, you can combo into the forward Lance Charge and turn around with back and X. The startup time on this is even longer, but it should work with enough advanced notice. Oh, no. Remember, there are some attacks where you just can't get away quickly enough. A good example is Teostra's Supernova. In these cases, it is better to sheathe your lance as quickly as possible and do a Superman dive. Mind's Eye Bouncing against a monster's tough hide can spell certain death in Monster Hunter. The lance feels like it is particularly susceptible to bouncing in world. To avoid this, it is necessary to know all your moves which have Mind's Eye. Both the Shield Bash and the Leaping Thrust have Mind's Eye, and they can be accessed through guard dashes. In particular, combining Leaping Thrust with reverse guard dashes can create an infinite combo I refer to as the Mind's Eye combo or the ESP combo. For the most part, it is positionally stable and conserves stamina, with 100% of the attack sequences being unblockable. A regular counter attack can bounce, but the charge counter has Mind's Eye. Keep in mind that this was not true in the beta version of the game, and this property was only added with the release of the full game. You can access this move by performing a longer counter, or by pressing circle during the power guard state. The finishing thrust has Mind's Eye, however, it is easy to accidentally bounce during the Lance Charge before you can activate the finishing attack. All of the Lance's airborne attacks have Mind's Eye. You can easily access these without slopes or ledges by using the jump attacks available during the Lance Charge. Sleep Wake Up If you or someone in your party is using sleep status, you will need to know how to take advantage of the sleep damage multiplier. In short, the first attack that wakes up a monster after it falls asleep, referred to as the wake up attack, receives a 2 times multiplier in damage. Only the first hit receives the multiplier, so sleep doesn't work well with attacks that hit multiple times with small damage. 
This means that you will want to allow the weapon with the single highest motion value to do the wake up attack. Generally this will be a greatsword player, however, if you are alone as a lance player, your options will be more limited. Generally, none of the lance's attacks will do more damage than a mega barrel bomb, so that will be your go-to option as a lancer. The lance's long reach allows you to detonate bombs safely without accidentally disturbing the sleeping monster. The shield poke gives you the most safety and precision when detonating bombs. It is important that you avoid having your hunter be caught in the blast, as the recovery time is lost time that can be used to do more damage to the monster. I find that the best way to do a wake up sequence with the lance is to shield poke to detonate the bombs, and then cancel into a guard advance so you can block both bomb explosions and start attacking the monster as soon as possible. If you do not have any bombs handy, there are two lance attacks which are most effective at wake up. Remember, the key to wake up is to have the highest motion value in a single attack. Depending on the monster's sleep posture, you have two choices. If the monster does not sleep with its weak point exposed, such as Diablos' belly, use the charged counter attack. This can be accessed with a long counter or from the power guard state. This has 40 motion value and is quite precise. If the monster sleeps with an exposed weak point, like Rathalos' head, you can lance charge in the opposite direction and wake up using the reverse attack. This has 50 motion value, but you have to be careful to avoid hitting less desirable target zones like wings or feet. Facing toward the monster and using the finishing thrust from the lance charge will often get you in trouble, since the tick damage from the lance charge will often wake up the monster instead, and you'll lose out on all that extra damage. Don't waste your time trying it. Common Combos Of course, the attacks and combos you will use always depend on the situation, but here are a few common combos. The mid thrust triple poke is a combo with really good reach. It hits low to the ground and is often used for monsters with low posture or monsters that have been tripped. The high thrust triple poke does more damage than the mid thrust combo and it's probably the combo I use the most. Sometimes it doesn't work well on tripped monsters. Counter cancel or step cancel depending on your positioning needs. You can choose to mix in power guard charge counter attacks, but I generally do not see this being used. While the motion value is higher and the charge hit has mind's eye, the time invested and the stamina consumption is not desirable. Also, since you cannot do two counter cancels in a row, only 50% of the combo will have mind's eye. Guard dash combos with the shield bash can apply exhaust or KO damage. These can be mildly unsafe, however, since the shield bash attack can't be cancelled easily. The guard dash to leaping thrust infinite combo has long reach and mind's eye for the entire combo. Since the number of hits is high, this can be a way to quickly do elemental damage or to quickly apply a status to a monster. This combo may eat through your sharpness more quickly. While this is not a combo per se, using lance charge into a stationary target and dealing tick damage can be a useful way to deal high damage over time. Since the number of hits is high, you can quickly apply elemental damage or status effects. However, keep in mind that this eats through your sharpness extremely quickly, so you will need some sort of sharpness management strategy. Also, be careful not to bounce on hard targets or trip your fellow hunters. This requires very high control over direction and positioning, but likely the highest damage combo with Lance is the high thrust combo to lance charge and finishing thrust. This is a very risky combo since the recovery time on finishing thrust is so high, but I often see it being used by speedrunners. If you have accidentally charged past your target, you can stop and turn around with the lance charge's reverse attack. It works well on monsters that have been tripped, but keep in mind that it will fail if you are facing downhill while standing on a slope. The momentum from the slope will completely kill your positioning and ruin your damage potential. 
And lastly, if you should be trying to deal mount damage to a monster, you can vary the lance charge combo and do a jump to an aerial thrust. Again, the recovery time from the aerial thrust is high, but it also has high motion value and is guaranteed to not bounce. Summary Now that we have thoroughly discussed the mechanics for the lance, let's summarize the pros and cons for this unique weapon. The pros of the lance are that it has fast attacks with little recovery time. It's very good with elemental damage and applying statuses. It has long reach and impeccable precision to focus on weak points. There is supreme control over distance and positioning. And lastly, it has the most safe, efficient, and adaptable defensive tools in the game. Cons And while the lance is an excellent tool in a hunt, it is not without its drawbacks. The sheath time is very long, making it unsafe to put away the weapon to use items. Sharpness management and stamina management can be an issue. Lance is lacking in burst damage options. Instead, it is used to apply constant damage over time. Lance is very vulnerable to interruptions from monster effects and tripping from fellow hunters. The lack of a roll makes it more difficult to deal with fire and blast blights. And lastly, steps and guard dashes can be difficult to learn compared to dodge rolls. Well, there you have it. Some say Lance gameplay can seem repetitive or simple. While the weapon isn't flashy, I'd say what makes being a Lancer so satisfying is that feeling of absolute invincibility. No matter what the monster throws at you, you've got a response for it. Lancing is like a dance. The monster leads and you flow with it. And sometimes you lead. Now that about covers in detail all the weapon mechanics related to using the lance. It is possible I have missed some detail, but this is probably more than enough material to keep you well informed. I realize this is a lot of information, so I have included a time-stamped index for topics within this video in case you want to go back and review a specific subject. If you have any questions or criticism for me, please leave them in the comments below. I would appreciate any feedback. Future Topics Now, mechanics is just part one of my in-depth lance guide. Future topics will include lancing styles, uh, evade, guard, counter, or DPS styles, armor skills for the lance, various lance builds, and lance guides for hunting specific monsters. If there is a specific topic you would like to see first, leave a comment or upvote a comment below so I can see what is most requested. So that's all I've got for now. This thing was an absolute beast, so I want to thank you for your viewership and your patience. We'll see you next time.